my days! Wow! <laughs> I'm happy! I'm, it's a noticeable difference immediately, guys! Now, I have driven this car pretty hard and uh, it's very difficult to overdrive it, but, but I do feel that there is a point where there's a tiniest bit, just a hint of understeer. Now to think that there's a company that's gonna transform the handling on a 720S is pretty ridiculous, right? Hey, you all right? Yeah, good sorry. Journey. Yeah, yeah, man, sorry I'm late. No, you all right, don't worry about it. All good, yeah. You guys just reverse it and then- Yeah. Uh, How we doing, Matt? Nice yeah, to meet good. you. You too. So you are Suspension Secrets? Yep. And we're gonna be doing some mods on my 720S today? Yeah, we're gonna be doing a few upgrades, mainly for the handling. We're gonna install some of our camber shims. Um, we're gonna be tweaking your tow geometry as well and just getting it set, so mainly for fast road, light track use. So we specialize all things suspension from supercar to race car, track car, mainly sort of geometry alignments, corner weight alignments, mm. suspension upgrades and installations, that sort of thing. Right. We do also do the race car stuff as well, so a few of the projects, so got a Yaris GR in at the minute from the guys over at Supercar Driver. Mm -hmm. We designed a few products for that because it's pretty hot off the press this car. So we're going to be doing some camber arms, toe arms. We're going to be looking at the seat lowering kit, which is the biggest problem with these cars is yeah. the height of the driver is touching the roof with me in it. So yeah. we need to try and get away getting that OEM seat as low as possible. Nice. So that's the plan for that one. I uh, built this Civic Cup car over the winter. So Sweet. this case was as a sort of a crash damaged road car. Mm -hmm. um, designed the roll cage in there and got it as low as physically possible mm. um, to get the center of gravity as low as possible. Right. And then we've sort of built the car from the ground up for the customer. CRZ, it should have a big turbo engine in there, K20 turbo, but engine was seized when we got it. So that's been pulled out and it's off for rebuild at the minute. So that's going to be about 400 brake, BTCC slicks. It's going to be quite a cool bit of kit, that. Sweet, um, man. Then Integrale we've got, over here, lovely. Yeah, we've got the <laughs> Delta Integrale Evo. So this started life as a road car. It mm -hmm. was at some point turned into a rally car. And then it came to us to be sort of stripped back to the shell, repainted, reworked, and fully rebuilt. So it's going to be used for hill climbs, but also have the option for rally. So we've got to incorporate the two in the, in the design of the build, basically. This is one of the rear shims. So it looks a bit odd, but this is because every single divot and dent is profiled to miss the original subframe effectively on the car. So it fits perfectly flat against mm -hmm. the car and between the lower arm and the, and the chassis. Um, so we spent a bit of time developing those and also developing which thickness gave what increase of camber and then testing that on a road car or a track car to make sure that, that amount of camber gave the sort of the use of the tire wheel. So you ball. can't adjust the camber on a stock 720 or? No, um, you have you've to got to use yeah? shims, yeah, exactly. Right. Yeah. And you bolt these on all four corners, yeah? Yeah, exactly. Different yeah. thicknesses at the rear and the front, depending yeah. on what we're doing it for. Because okay. the biggest issue with the McLarens, when you push them hard, is they murder the outside edge of the tire. Right. And that's why a lot of McLaren owners on, on track, yeah, they're down to cords sometimes on the outer edge, okay. especially on the fronts, because mm. they don't have enough camera standard mm. for that aggression because they're designed and ultimately sold for road use. Mm. And they've got to go through all sorts of procedures, you know, like high speed stops, they need to test in the snow, the rain, but yeah. the majority in, in the UK mainly using them on the track or fast road in the dry. So, so we have a, a set for fast road, a set for track and mm. a set for race, which is like just really hardcore track yeah. use. So we're obviously going to do more we're going to go slash. fast road, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, and what would that do to the car then when I drive it? So you're going to get more mid-corner grip, a lot more. and But more importantly, you're going to get a lot more front-end grip because right. they're quite bad for understeer right in the limit. Mm -hmm. So you're going to get the nose hooking in and carrying a lot more speed through the corners. Right, and I have noticed that when you do tug it, like, you know, really push it, it does. Just a hint, I mean, obviously on track you're going to expose it more, aren't you? Yeah. Uh, but you're saying they're notorious for understeer, the 720, yeah? Yeah, exactly. Well, most McLarens, and most supercars, to be honest, that's because yeah. they're sort of mid-engine rear-wheel drive. Yeah. They're set up with the safety factor to understeer first, because yeah. if you don't know what you're doing in the car, mm. that's the safest way to lose the yeah, grip. Got but you. if you're a pretty handy driver, you want a neutral car, maybe erring towards oversteer. So that's, yeah. that's what we can help get to. Okay, so it will do that now, yeah? Yeah, exactly. Quick 
little update. Oscar got completely gapped on the simulator. When he's not filming for LLF, he's simulator racing. And he just got like, I think I've done two, three seconds on him each track. Oscar, terrible. What are we saying? So you got these shims installed? Yeah, so we've got shims now installed between basically the lower arm uh, mounting points and the chassis. That basically pushes the lower arm out slightly, which uh -huh. gives negative camber to the wheel. Right. So it's not just plus standard, it's just like a fixed lower wishbone. So we shim that away and so get you, the camber. So you've got the front and the rears on? Yeah, front and rears are all in. Yeah. You can see the rears a bit easier, so it's better to come back here. So now we're cracking off all the tie rods on all four corners. Uh -huh. uh, we're going to get the string and line kit on and get your toes set to our settings now. These are your pipes that connect the shocks together. So it's like the hydraulic system connects with the ECU that controls how much damping force is through the corners. Well, what's your advice for people? Because some people would say, you know, you can just go to quick fit or something, get a, like an alignment yeah. done, but this is completely different, right? Yeah, I mean, it's, the, it's more the level of accuracy that we go to. So like on a lot of the laser systems stuff, it, there's a screen and when the screen goes green, you stop and you tighten it up and the numbers yeah. can be slightly different, but yeah. our settings are always exactly the same side to side. Like, mm. And it, this set. is obviously a setup that's been tested and proven yeah, to, exactly, to yeah. improve the and handling. It's, it's our settings as well, so it's not, yeah. we're not just returning it back to manufacturer settings. Like, yeah. If you have like a, a knock on a rim and you want it just evening out, then that's yeah. where you go to like the quick fit alignment sort yeah. of thing, but this is more designed and developed settings, so it's the numbers we put on the car that really matter. Yeah, so, another thing Matt was just saying is like some people would question like what makes you think that you could apply a better setting than McLaren, you know? Like he's saying, universally, McLaren don't want people to crash these cars, so they'd prefer them to understeer. Obviously, the more advanced driver would prefer a bit of oversteer, but yeah, that is why, you know, there will definitely be an improvement. Obviously, I'm gonna give you guys the feedback as well on the way back, or maybe in a separate video. What's this, like a little jig setup you got? Yeah, string and line kit. So, it's basically a frame attached to the car. We then get the frame measured perfectly with the center line of the chassis yeah. so that the strings are perfectly parallel. Then the yeah. wheels are then sat inside of that doing their own thing. We measure to the front and the back of the rim and then we can take the angle measurement basically. These bars have machine grooves in. Right. So you, you go for option two because yours are quite wide. This is one front to back. Yeah. And then, so this kit's currently plonked on the car, literally. So it's just sat. So when the strings are run on, I can now start going around taking measurements to the string, to the poles from the car mm. to make sure that the kit is calibrated to the center line of the chassis. set now so we've got the rear towing in uh, to our settings so before it was neutral on one side and towing out on the other so that's going to really okay. upset the back end like right. not feel nice at all on throttle it's going to try and twist and crab a little bit whereas now it's going to stay true and straight still allow rotation but not oversteer nice. so it'd be a, a lot more nimble and, and what do you do at the front just getting so first of all centralizing the steering wheel making sure that's perfectly in the middle then take the measurements and again we're going to tow that in but not as much as the back so you get sharper turning but you still get high speed stability. So if I'm pushing it now, yep. will it go into oversteer or no? Cause It'll be pretty neutral. It's almost like a wash, you know, like it, the whole car sort of washes now. Okay. And that's what these settings do to it. When you go to track, you start getting the oversteer. Yeah. Um, and that, that sort of brings the back end to life as well. So cars all back together? Yeah, all sorted. Mm -hmm. Camera shims in, geometry, camber and tow all sorted now. So take it for a spin and see what you think. I'm sure I'm noticing that wheel's a lot lighter already. Yeah, usually it's really grippy. That wheel was a lot lighter, you know that? <laughs> Why does that make me laugh? Oh my days. Wow. <laughs> I'm happy. I'm, it's a noticeable difference immediately. Guys, I feel like the car's lost. <laughs> I'm so gassed. Why not? Calm down, Ricky, calm down. Guys, it feels like 100 kilos lighter. Like, that's not an exaggeration. That's what it feels like immediately from the wheel. It feels lighter. I didn't know it was gonna... Wow. I mean, you know, the 720S is amazing, but yeah, you can notice. It's a little bit sharper, yeah. You know, you're not supposed to drive with one hand, obviously, but if you drove this car with one hand, it would kind of just pull like this. Now, this is a one-handed car, look. That's one, I can drive that with my fingertips. That is amazing. <laughs> it's almost like I've lost a bit of feedback. Oh my 
days, what a difference. The wheel feels 30, 40% lighter. That'll make me drive this car way harder, a lot easier. I can't wait to take it on a road up near me. Mm, interesting. modification you know that must have i wonder what we do to an m3 or an m2 night and day 100 yeah night yeah. and day like i can't even believe it i mean it's crazy to think that this car isn't like it's from factory the, the main reasons are like we've added more camber now in a straight line so your braking efficiency in situations like snow wouldn't be as good so mm. but they have to comply with these things whereas you're not going to drive that in the snow yeah, and the other reason is like you've got European tire efficiency laws to comply with to sell a car to the public, things like that, mm. that you've got to tick a box basically, whereas we can undo that to give the performance. Got you. So there's compromises all over the car mm. just to be able to sell the thing. Just a recap for what yeah. we've actually done to the car, do you want to just... Yeah, so basically we've installed the camber shims for the fast road slash track, so the, the lowest shim we do, and then we've put our toe settings on there, so the, the actual geometry is not McLaren anymore, it's our own settings that work really well for fast road yeah. and light track. For anybody interested, where are you located? You got any website? So or? we're in Nutsford, just south of Manchester. Um, yeah, we've got a website, suspension secrets to cut it UK. Um, Instagram, suspension secrets, Facebook, suspension secrets. Mm. So follow us on there. And, and you attend track days and stuff like that, you said? Yeah, yeah, you? we do all the RMA and circuit days, track days in the UK. Hopefully get over to Spa and, and the ring this year. Yeah. Um, and yeah, we set a motorsport flat patch up there so we can do corner weight and alignments, alignments and like damper tweaks and set your car up there as yeah, well. Any of you guys that have got M2s, M3s, M4s, whatever you've got, 720s, you need to get down to the ASAP and get it booked in man because that is yeah one of the best mods. I'm over the moon, you can probably see anyway. But uh, yeah guys, I'm going to end the video there. As always, I hope you enjoyed. If you did, hit the thumbs up, subscribe if you're new to the channel. Yeah, see you later guys. Bye.